most unique Wahoo trolling I've ever done, Captain Carl. Freaking rough. Woo! What? What else is in the water? Hey, I think she's a little worn out from the past couple of days. I think I have COVID. So we're out here in the St. Pete, Tampa area. Decided to come out here because it's kind of close to our parents and, and well, because my mom makes a real nice chicken soup. We needed to come out here to quarantine. What, what? does this mean? It says detected? Does that mean I have COVID? What? Wait, can you not say that so loud? Yes, quarantine, that's right, we got the Rona. But we're on the mend now. You know, just before we caught the Rona, we had an epic adventure out to St. Thomas Islands. And so check out this adventure here. Look who joined us. Glad you made it. So I had a guy contact me who's been a subscriber of our YouTube channel for years. He just bought a massive 62 foot privileged sail cat and wants to start doing charters, including spearfishing charters, and wanted to partner up with us on some adventures. He had just purchased the boat and was taking it out on his maiden voyage and wanted to know if we wanted to come along. The dates he threw out there just so happened to be on my birthday and I said, why the hell not? So Christine and I flew out to St. Thomas to meet up with the guy and check out his new boat. The wind and waves were going to be rough, but I thought this would be a good experience to see how a boat like this handles it. Christine and I have been thinking about living on a boat for a couple of years, so this would be a great experience. We went and got our COVID tests and loaded up our gear for the trip. Oh, uh, the fun time traveling. So we booked a couple of first class tickets to St. Thomas and flew out of Miami International Airport. We were having some drinks on the plane and celebrating our unique little expedition for my birthday trip. That's a heavy one. We arrived to St. Thomas and make our way to the marina with all of our gear. Now who brings this much to St. Thomas? We do. Not many people come with stuff like this? Coming. I hope you guys are fun, enjoy yourself, but most of all, be safe, all right? We plan on it. We appreciate the warm welcome. Okay, so we just arrived in Crown Bay. Check it out. And now we're just waiting on our boat to show up. Hey, so there's a bar over there. Let's just go over there and get a couple of drinks and bite to eat. While we wait, wait for on that. our boat? Yeah. yeah. All right, let's do it. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Go ahead, and grab the gear. Go. You, you go. Get the gear. No, you go. You got it. You get it. You got it. Okay. <laughs> and it's not tomorrow. Your birthday is the day after tomorrow. He doesn't know how old he is, and he doesn't know when his birthday is. It really doesn't matter. <laughs> While we were waiting, we met a captain who subscribes to both of our channels and he gives us some spearfishing info about the area. And just like that, we had a new friend. Christine. Christine, I'm Captain Derek, by the way. Captain Derek. Captain Derek. Good to meet you. Good to meet you guys. It's a pleasure. <laughs> you guys are all over the place. You guys are all over the place. And that's what's awesome. Man, that's all we're doing is having fun. It's having fun. That's what we do in this business. Hey, nice to meet you. Well, you guys, our boat has arrived. The boat arrives and picks us up in all of our gear. If you want to call it a boat, more like a yacht. We get to meet Carl, a fellow adventurer who spearfishes on scuba, but wants to learn free dive spearfishing. Here we go. We're on uh, Tres Seonones. Seonones? Seonones. Seonones. Tres Seonones. Really cool little trip we got invited on. It's a 62 foot privileged catamaran, beautiful boat. Actually, the biggest catamaran at this marina, but I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a little tour, so let's go. So, this is the front of the boat. <laughs> and here's the little living room area. Tracy 
Jonas. Tres Jonas. Tres Suenos. Yes, thank you. Suenos. Three dreams. Tres Suenos. Here we are at Tres Suenos. And uh, they gave us the master suite. So this is where Judah and I are staying. It's the master bedroom. We got a nice shower right here. Here's the bathroom. Right up these steps is our room. And look, we even got a whole desk with all of our camera and computer equipment. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take you guys back upstairs. Let's go. Okay, and this is another living area for a dining room. Say. Here we are in the kitchen. What are we gonna do out here? We're gonna spearfish. We're gonna Three dive some... spearfish and have some fun. We got some foil boards, some paddle boards, we got our spear guns and some underwater scooters. The weather isn't perfect, but it's definitely better than being at home. We're gonna see what happens, what we decide to do. We don't know. Yeah. We don't know. We're just Going with going the flow. With, going with the flow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to get some breakfast and then after that, probably going to start sailing on our way to Puerto Rico. So let's go. After a day of getting all the provisions ready for our adventure, we set sail for a small island called Culebra. It's in Puerto Rico. Well, here we are, finally setting sail. Here, so it's probably gonna be a rough ride. Probably gonna be a rough ride, but it's gonna be a good time. The wind and waves were rough, we're talking 10 foot seas, but it felt like nothing with this massive catamaran cutting through each wave effortlessly. It was an interesting experience. We set out four lines along the way, hoping to catch anything we could for dinner. All right, so we're gonna try and do a little trolling here. Hopefully this gear holds up. Got some old string on here, but we're throwing on a Nomad. Let's see if we can get a Wahoo, Mahi, who knows? Specifically Wahoo would be nice. Yeah, it's running good. I'm writing the story to my next film as we're making our way to the next island, trolling off the back, and Christine is watching the lines. Woo, what have we got there, baby? Can we say a ceviche? <laughs> Big boy. We catch a few fish along the way, trolling off the back of the boat, including a huge kingfish and a Spanish mackerel. All right, you guys, so we just anchored up. Now we're gonna get suited up, hit a couple of dive spots out on the dinghy over here. That kingfish was pretty big so we're gonna use it as bait because there's a huge problem here with cigatera and we don't want to get sick so we're gonna chop that up use it as bait and we'll see what we find and we had just enough time to get out on the dinghy and do a little spear fishing but it was rough we didn't have much time but eventually we found a few fish and a couple of octopus to feed the entire boat yeah we're eating good tonight Kojak and Judah shot the rest of these. Yep, we did our part saving the reef. <laughs> nice. Thank God we had Judah. <laughs> Feeding the tribe. Feeding the tribe. We set sail once again and come to another small island. I forgot the name. Anchor up for the night. The guys are trying out foil boarding for the first time, but Christine and I decided to head to the top of the boat and watch the beautiful sunset. This boat has been newly equipped with some really nice underwater lights, and I see some tarpons swimming around the boat. While waiting for dinner, I decided to try and catch a tarpon on light tap. Oh! And did I ever catch a tarpon? A little tarpon on some light tackle! Woo! The next day, we set sail towards San Juan, Puerto Rico. Oh, is that a wahoo or a barracuda? That looks like a wahoo! 
That looks like a wahoo! And we catch a beautiful wahoo coming into the inlet. <laughs> Woo! It's almost like Hollywood Perfect coming into San Juan Court. <laughs> We're gonna eat good tonight. Yeah. That's for sure. I tried foil boarding for the first time, and I didn't do too bad. He's up, first try. It's a lot harder than it looks. It's also a lot more dangerous than it looks, too. So we had one night left before we were gonna leave so that we could spend the holidays with our family. We decided to go out on a little sunset trip and see how this boat handles in the rough waves. Just waiting to take off. It's gonna be an adventure, taking it out just ourselves. He's the right guy for it because I'm just as ballsy as he is. Christine's asleep. Should be some good content. Thank you, Christ. <laughs> Most unique Wahoo trolling I've ever done, Captain Carl. I agree. <laughs> I don't know if you can actually see these waves. But... Babe, you all right? She's uh, she's sleeping. I think she's a little worn out from the past couple of days. We actually weren't planning on going out that far, but once you get out there, and you see how beautifully the boat's handling. You just keep going farther and farther. Fortunately, we forgot to batten down the hatches. And that includes tying down all the gear that we had on the back. Carl and I are up on top of the boat enjoying the sunset, a couple of lines trolling in the water. Christine pops her head up and says in a fairly calm voice, I think one of the e-foil boards and a Yeti cooler just fell off the boat. E-foil boards? Yeah. Holy, where are they floating? Can you imagine? What else is floating in the water? The cooler is over there. Oh, the cooler. The Yeti's floating. Needless to say, it was sheer pandemonium. Oh, great. We immediately had to turn the boat around and try and scoop up the gear. I see it coming on the port side. Now we gotta save the Yeti. I got it! We scooped up all the gear and headed in. That was a close call right at sunset. Had it been a few minutes later, we would have never even been able to see the gear. And an e-foil board is not a cheap piece of equipment. Was that a rude awakening when you were down there sleeping? Yeah. <laughs> my stomach was like feeling weird until it goes on a roller coaster. You know, we were just going to go out for a minute and then, uh, you know, it just kept going and like, why don't we put the lines out? And one thing that led to the other. After watching a beautiful sunset, we got the pleasure of watching a beautiful moonrise. So we've got reservations at the Fontainebleau in Miami. And first class tickets out of here. I don't know, Christine's starting to come down with something. Hopefully she's not sick. All right, Carl. Oh, good time, man. Yeah, good to us. Thank you. Great trip. So we thought we needed a COVID test to come back home in the States. But what we overlooked was, you know, Puerto Rico and St. Thomas are part of the States. Man, what an adventure. <laughs> but regardless, we went to the airport and got a free COVID test. We thought we would get the results in 24 hours, but after they shoved that stick way up our nose, they told us it'd be 48 hours. And unfortunately, 48 hours was going to be too late. We boarded the plane all masked up and headed back home. Christine was not feeling well, and I was unsure if I was feeling all right myself. But we had no choice but to get home for the holidays and just be as careful as we could. That's it. Let's go. Got our COVID test. The results came back and the link doesn't work. And I'm sick. We booked a nice hotel in Miami Beach where we were gonna meet a friend and his family that I hadn't seen for a long time. And just as we're checking into the room, we find out the news. 
COVID. What does this mean? It says detected. Does that mean I have COVID? This says normal range, not detected. Results graphic detected. Interesting twist. Looks like all plans were off. We had to quarantine at the hotel and our short stay turned into a lot longer of a stay than we thought. We also had to cancel all our plans with our family and spend Christmas just Christine and I behind closed doors. But at least we had each other. 